Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a chocolate peanut butter cake and this is what it looks like. This is, has four layers of a moist chocolate buttermilk cake and then we're going to fill it and frost it with a peanut butter frosting and a chocolate ganache and then we're going to decorate the sides with some chocolate curls. So um, we're going to start by making our cake. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need two eight inch round pans with two inch sides. So that's 20 centimeters by five centimeters. And then you can either butter the inside of your pans or I'm just gonna spray them today with a non-stick spray. And then I'm going to just take a round of parchment paper and put that on the bottom. That way, doubly sure that our cake will not stick to the bottom of the pan. There we have it. So now, um, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or you could use a hand mixer for this. So a really easy cake to make. All we're going to do is put all our dry ingredients in our mixing bowl. So you will need one and three quarter cups, 225 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour and one and three quarter cups, 350 grams of granulated white sugar, three quarters of a cup, 75 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. Now you could use the regular unsweetened or today I'm using the Dutch processed. And then for leavening, you will need one teaspoon, four grams of baking soda, one teaspoon, four grams of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. That's it. <laughs> Oop. Sure, I get all that in there. So now I'm just going to, on low speed, I'm just going to mix all the ingredients together. Okay, so that's simple enough. So now for our wet ingredients in a separate uh, bowl, I'm just using a large measuring cup, I have three large eggs. That would be about 155 grams of eggs and have your eggs at room temperature. I'm just gonna whisk those, break them up a little. And then to that, I'm going to add one and three quarter cups which is 420 milliliters of buttermilk. You want your buttermilk at room temperature. Now you can buy buttermilk at your store. You could use buttermilk powder, or you can just take one and three quarter cups, 420 milliliters of milk, and add one and three quarter tablespoons of either a lemon juice or a vinegar. Just stir that together, together, let it sit at room temperature about 10 minutes, and you could use that instead of the commercially made buttermilk. Then I'm, for flavoring, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons, six grams of pure vanilla extract. And then our last ingredient is a half a cup, 120 milliliters of a flavorless oil. Now that could be a corn, canola, vegetable, safflower oil, whatever you have. And you know, the benefit of oil, a couple uh, reasons it's good in a cake, is one, it makes it really nice and moist. Plus, if you refrigerate the cake, it doesn't get like really hard, like when you use butter, it keeps it like a little soft. So, a couple reasons there. So now, what we're going to do is add this a third, about a third of the, uh, the wet ingredients at a time. So I'm just going to eyeball that. Usually I measure, but I'm just going to eyeball it. And then on low speed, I'm just going to mix to get this together and then get a nice smooth, uh, it'd be like a paste. And do not, at this point, do not scrape down the sides and bottom of your bowl. Okay, that looks good. You just want to mix everything together. We don't want to scrape anything down right now because that can cause you to have a lumpy batter. So I'm just going to add another third of our liquid. And again, on low speed, just mix all that together to get a nice, smooth, thick paste. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, at this point, I'll just show you, we've got, you know, it's, it's getting not as thick, so now you can scrape down. It's fluid enough that we, we shouldn't get any lumps if we've done it right. still really quite thick. Make sure you get to the bottom of your bowl. Okay. Really smell that cocoa powder. So good. So now I'm going to add the rest of our liquid. And mix it again just until everything's all together and it's nice and smooth. Okay, now that wasn't too hard. It's a great cake batter, nice and easy to make. So now what we're just going to do is divide between two cake, between our cake pans. So to get an even amount, and you want to get a fairly, like about the same amount in each pan so that they bake within the same time frame. So, um, if you have a scale, which I do recommend, uh, you will need to put 600 and about 660 grams of batter in each pan. That makes it really easy, but you can eyeball. Don't forget to zero your scale. Okay, so now we are going to bake our cakes. A little messy there. <laughs> um, everyone's oven is a little different. But I find between 35 and 40 minutes, what you're looking for, the cakes will rise. If you take your finger and press it in the center, it uh, will spring back. The cakes start to shrink just a little from the sides of the pan. And of course, a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. So about 35, 40 minutes. Our chocolate buttermilk cakes are done so place them on a wire rack to cool now I forgot to tell you when you're putting two pans in the oven and baking them at the same time put a little space between them so that there enough air goes around them as they bake so as you can see nice rise to them they're starting to pull away from the sides of the pan and a toothpick insert in the center did come out clean. So now, I'm going to let them cool on the wire rack in the pan for about 20 minutes. And while that is happening, what we are going to do is to start our chocolate ganache. So you will need, it's just, ganache is two ingredients mainly, cream, heavy whipping cream, and chocolate. Simple enough. So um, I put one cup, which is 240 milliliters, 240 grams, of heavy cream, heavy whipping cream in a small saucepan. And that's cream with the 35 to 40% butterfat content, which means when you whip it, it will reach stiff peaks. So what I'm gonna do is just put that over medium heat and just bring it just to a boil. It'll start to bubble around the outside. Watch it carefully. You could do it in the microwave. Again, watch carefully because it'd be like that and then if you let it go too long it will foam up. So then in a heat proof bowl you will need eight ounces 240 grams of chocolate. You can use either a semi-sweet or a bittersweet chocolate and you want to use a chocolate that you you know if you just eat a piece you like the taste of it and then you need I'm using these round discs if you use a block kind of coarsely chop it and 
So just put that, and I'm going to bring this to a boil. Okay, you can start to see the bubbles around the outside. Don't get that off the heat before it foams up too much. And then immediately pour it over your chocolate. And just kind of shake your pan just a little so all the chocolate is under the cream. Now what I'm going to do is just let this sit like maybe a minute and then we will start stirring. Okay, so I let this sit a little so the cream, hot cream has time to melt some of the chocolate. So now we're going to start stirring. You want to start in the center. I'm using a heat proof spatula and we're going to kind of agitate it really quickly but only in the center and go only one way and just start. So we want a really nice smooth ganache. So. So as you can see, it's starting to turn brown. That you're getting the two ingredients to mix together. So we can make our circle a little bigger now. As I said, only go one way here. Okay, then a little bigger. Now I used a chocolate that has a 58% cocoa content. I don't think you want to use much less than that because we want like this, our ganache to set up to a really nice, um, like where we can spread it as a filling. And make sure you use uh, that cream with that high of percent. Otherwise you won't get it set up. You can't use milk here. I know some people say, can I use milk to make ganache? Not in this case. We're using equal weights of chocolate and cream. So now, as you can see, it's a good mixture. So I can go around and now just stir it and get it all mixed together. Isn't that beautiful? You know, ganache, you can use it for so many things. When it's kind of like this, you could just let it cool down a bit. You could pour it over your cake as a glaze. If I put the, covered it and put it in the fridge and got it really hard, I could make chocolate truffles out of it or I could whip it and make a really soft and fluffy frosting. But for this case, what we are going to do is let this set up at room temperature to a really nice uh, soft spreading consistency. Now that's going to take a while. I find six, eight hours. So what I do recommend and what I did is I make my ganache the night before and then I just let it sit out on the counter and then next day when I'm ready to, um, you know, fill and frost the cake, my ganache is already ready. So it's kind of a do ahead step. So what you want to do is take some plastic wrap. You can either, like I have a double thickness, you could either, you know, really, we don't want a skin to form on the top of that mixture. So you can just really, if you really make sure you got the air out, or you can actually, the best way is to just take your plastic wrap and just put it right down onto the surface of the chocolate, like so. And then just put this aside, like I said, for a while until, and I, did do it the night before. So this is, this is about eight hours. So I will, as you can see, this one's kind of all liquidy. <laughs> this one, and if I take it, see it's, oh, look at that. It's gonna be really nice, really nice soft spreading consistency for our cake. So. That's that. So I'm going to just let my cakes cool. And when we come back, we will take our cakes out of the pan. So to take your cake out of the pan, the first thing I like to do is to just grease our wire rack that you're going to let your cakes cool on. Or you could just use a little oil or even spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. And then your cake. Just take a flat edge and run it all the way around the inside to make sure it's not sticking. And then Take a wire rack and flip it. Should come off really nice. Just peel the parchment, flip it, and place it on your rack, and that's it. 
So what I'm going to do is let these cool completely and then when we come back we will start our peanut butter frosting. So for our peanut butter frosting, if you have a stand mixer, use your paddle attachment again. So you will need one cup, 225 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted butter, have it at room temperature, along with three ounces, 85 grams of full fat cream cheese and have that at room temperature. And I'm just gonna put that in there. And I'm just going to beat these ingredients just until they get nice and creamy and smooth. Okay, so no lumps there. So now, for the rest of our ingredients, you will need peanut butter frosting. We need peanut butter. Three quarters of a cup, 185 grams of a smooth peanut butter. And I'm using the peanut butter that does have the stabilizer in it. If you wanted to use the natural that doesn't, uh, you may have to play a little with your frosting to get the, a thick consistency. You may have to add a little more sugar, a little more butter. So just keep that in mind. And then for flavoring, one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract and a half a cup. I'm just going to... A half a cup, 60 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing. And I do want to sift that because it has lumps. I'm just using a strainer. If you actually had a sifter, you could use that. This frosting is so good. <laughs> and then the last ingredient. It's a little unusual. We're gonna add two teaspoons, 10 grams of molasses. Now, if you, don't, if you can't find molasses, you don't like molasses, you don't have to add this. But I find it really enhances the flavor of the uh, peanut butter frosting. So try it if you, if you have some. So now I'm just going to beat this on medium, start on low speed, bring it up to medium, just until it's all mixed together and we want it a little light and fluffy. So for a couple minutes. Okay, so that's our frosting. As you're mixing this a couple times, stop your mixer, scrape down your bowl just to make sure everything gets all mixed together. So this is our peanut butter frosting. Isn't that gorgeous? Can you make this ahead? Yes, you can. You could uh, make it and refrigerate it for probably up to five days, but you will, if you refrigerate it, then you are gonna have to bring it out and bring it up to room temperature and then re-beat it just to get some air in there. So now I'm just gonna clean up and then when I come back, we will assemble our cake. So now to assemble our cake, if you have a turntable, that's great, perfect for doing this. If not, just flat surface is good too. So the first thing we need to do is to slice our cakes in half. I'm, I've just taken an eight inch, 20 centimeter cake circle just so it doesn't stick, put my cake on there. Now, if I look down, if you look down and you have a slight dome on your cake, which I do, just take your knife and we can just slice that off. Kind of get it as, as flat as we can. And this is for you to eat later or as you're doing the cake, if you need a little substance. <laughs> That looks pretty good. And then, so, take your long, sharp knife and go about halfway. Make a, just a little cut in and then just turn your turntable and go around. Try to get it about halfway all the way around. And then when you have meat up, then just cut through. And hopefully we've cut it in half and there you have it. Okay, so now clean that up a bit. So we start with a clean surface. So now I'm using, this is a, cake, a cardboard cake circle. I'm using a nine inch, 23 centimeter. You can get this at cake decorating stores, party stores, or 
online, Amazon. Um, and I put a little tape on the back, masking tape, just so it'll stick onto there. And the good thing about this is it makes it really easy to pick your cake up, transfer it into the fridge, or if you're taking it somewhere, it's good. So now what you wanna do is take your one layer and I'm gonna put it, which is a little different, I'm putting it cut side down. So the top of the cake is up. Because this, there's a lot of crumbs to this cake. And if I want to put the frosting in there, I don't want it, you know, getting mixed up in there too much. So what you will need first, we're going to alternate layers between the peanut butter frosting and the chocolate ganache. You will need a half a cup, which is 150 grams of your peanut butter frosting. Let's put that on there. And I have measured it all out. Scales, again, good for this. Okay, and then you can just take a spatula and spread it out as even as you can. You can smell the peanut butter or I can smell the chocolate. Actually, I'll tell you now, this kind of tastes like a peanut butter cup. <laughs> so if you like a peanut butter cup, you're going to love this cake. I'm going to get it fairly even. You can kind of Go down and take a look, and then I'm going to just take a spatula and then just kind of have it in even, like straight, and just go around, try to get it, you know, so it's a fairly even layer. Otherwise, we could have a lopsided cake, which, you know, we can fix that, but... It's better if we try to start off pretty flat. Okay, so that's that. And so then we take next part. Whoop, these fell off there. <laughs> and you want the cut side down. Uh, I'm just gonna, well, a piece came off. I'm just gonna fit that right in there. No one will ever know but us. And hands here and now we're going to put our chocolate ganache again half a cup 150 grams I've pre-measured if you're you know doing this if you're organized and have everything out it does make it a little easier because you know it can get a little stressful if you're not used to assembling this type of layer cake and we want to make it as easy as possible for us ourselves so again just spread that out and, and I'm just going to go around okay that's that and next, so again, I want the top of the cake facing up. You can just kind of press down a little to compact that. Oh, and now, I don't want to get mixed up here. Now we have the... Uh, Again, half a cup, 150 grams of the peanut butter frosting. Okay, and our final layer. And you could make your cakes ahead of time. I don't know whether I mentioned that. And then you could just keep them in the fridge overnight. If you wanted to do that ahead of time. So, you know, you don't have to do the whole thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just to make sure we got everything. I'm just going to take a bench scraper. First, I'm going to clean up my turntable here. And then I'm just going to, just to kind of even everything out here, make sure my cake is straight because it doesn't look too exactly, and we can kind of fix that up. 
it's a little lopsided, you can just fix it. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now what we're going to do, it's called a crumb coat. And that way we're going to seal all the crumbs in before we do our final coat. So I'm going to uh, use my um, ganache here and put some on the top. And then I'll use my spatula here. And I'm going to put it all down the side. Whoop. Now, if you found everything's too soft, you could put your, the whole cake in the, in the fridge for a little bit to set up. So you kind of find it's just too hard to work with. Then do that. Okay, so now just spread out. So don't worry if there's all crumbs in there or it doesn't look that great. I'm just trying to get a thin coat. And then I'm going to use my, and then just kind of go around just to kind of smooth that out as best as you can. Said you can fuss as much as you want and then just if you want to get the like around the edge just take your um, just kind of glide it and you can fix up those edges as best as you can and then what we're going to do is put the whole cake into the refrigerator probably I would say at least 30 minutes get that uh, the crumb coat nice and firm so that then we can uh, go ahead and put our final coat on top. So now I did let the cake chill about 30 minutes so it's nice and firm. And then take your remaining peanut butter frosting, put it on top. So if your crumb coat is not perfect, do not worry. It is just like a crumb coat. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth and and then we are just going to with a spatula or a offset spatula or a straight spatula or even the back of a spoon or a knife just spread it out right to the edge now if you wanted to you could do the the crumb coat and put the uh, cake in the fridge overnight if you didn't want to do the whole thing you want to finish it off the next day Now I'm just going to take my spatula and kind of smooth that out. And you can just, you can take, I'll just take a small one. And you can just straighten up those, the, around the sides, like so. Get a nice straight edge. Because the cake's cold, you can just kind of fix it up. that looks pretty good so you could just leave it like that or you could take your spatula or you could take a spoon and then just lightly and make a spiral design don't just do it right on the top surface of your frosting and just spin your turntable around all the way into the center and there you have it okay so you can just you know fix up your sides and then what i'm going to do is, is put this back into the refrigerator about 15 minutes to firm that up and then we will do our final coat of ganache on the sides so now our peanut butter frosting is firm so let's put that back up there and we are going to put our final coat on the sides of our ganache. So with the leftover ganache that you have, I just take a little spatula and then I'm just going to first just kind of spread it all the way around. 
Make sure you get to the bottom. So now I've kind of covered the crumb coat with a layer of ganache. Now, if you wanted to, you could just kind of do swirls in that around the side. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put some chocolate curls and shavings on top of the ganache. So I want a real nice, smooth, uh, smooth uh, coat of my ganache. So I'm going to use my scraper again, hold it, and just go around, spin your turntable into your nice. Now, because we're going to put curls, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> I know. It's hard not to keep fussing and fussing with this. And then if you have, like here where it's a little rough, you could just fill that in with the, take a little, put it there, and then spin. Like I said, fuss as much as you want. happy with that. So now the final step is I have, like I said, you could use curls, shavings, grated chocolate. You don't have to put anything. You could use some chopped nuts, chocolate sprinkles. So what I'm going to do, you can just kind of hold, tilt your, your um, cake up like this. And I actually prefer to put it down on. You could hold it if you feel confident <laughs> and just press like this all the way around. My shavings are cold because I don't want your, the heat of your hand will warm them up so I had them cold before I started. So this is what you do. You just go all the way around, put as many or as little as you want like so. I don't want to do the whole thing. And then if you want to do the top, you could take a couple and just decorate the top. So now, um, what I like to do is then put this into the refrigerator to chill, preferably, I think, overnight. And that gives the flavors time to kind of soften, mingle, and I, th I think the cake just tastes better that way, but at least several hours let it chill. And then when we come back, we will cut a slice. So here we are with our chocolate peanut butter cake. You know, it's a really pretty cake. It's a little bit of work, so I would call it a special occasion dessert. But so now to cut it, you will need a sharp knife. I have a glass of hot water here makes it a little easier to cut. So I put my knife in there, flip it off, and then do a cut. Now, this cake, you do have to store it in the refrigerator, but you want to bring it to room temperature for serving because especially this peanut butter frosting, to get that really nice mouth feel, it has to be at room temperature. Otherwise, it's, it's a little... The butter and the frosting makes it a little too, it doesn't have good mouthfeel. So trust me, <laughs> although you could try a piece and find out for yourself, but bring it to room temperature. So wipe your knife between cuts so that you don't get the chocolate in the peanut butter frosting. Take a spatula, or if you have one of those cake servers, you can do that. First piece is always the hardest to get out. Okay, there it goes. Plate. And a oh, pretty clean slice. Oh, nice looking cake. <laughs> like I said. So you have, you can see the peanut butter frosting. And then in between that is the chocolate ganache. Chocolate ganache on the outside. That beautiful buttermilk chocolate cake. So let's try some.
So you have that really moist, dense chocolate buttermilk cake. And the buttermilk makes it nice and tender along with the oil. And then, of course, peanut butter frosting. It just has really nice mouthfeel. And then the cream cheese adds a little bit of tanginess and offsets the sweetness from the uh, peanut butter. And then, of course, chocolate ganache. Can't be chocolate. And then, you know, just the combination. It looks nice. It looks fantastic. And it just tastes just as good. So really. And you can freeze this cake well wrapped. A good idea, get yourself a cake box. Great way to store it. Take it to someone's house. Try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.